Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Heroes of Dragon Age mobile application by Capital Games and Electronic Arts. This game was uh, first uh, released uh, towards the end of 2013 and is available for either the uh, Apple or uh, Android device. This game requires a persistent internet connection in order to play and also requires about 700 megabytes of storage. This game is available uh, through either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and requires no cost in order to download or play the game. The game does offer in-app purchases but is not required. Now this uh, version of the game uh, here in this vid is uh, running uh, on a Nook HD tablet uh, which uses uh, Android. Now uh, this is a pretty interesting game. Uh, it uses characters and lore from the Dragon Age universe of uh, video games and it has an interesting play style. I, I like to call it a, a collectible fantasy combat simulator. Uh, it allows you to assemble uh, characters, uh, a squad of characters, to do battle with other squads uh, through a uh, non-interactive combat uh, simulator. Uh, but the real fun is actually uh, collecting and uh, assembling your squad and uh, putting them in uh, certain formations to uh, best be able to defeat the other uh, squad. Now, uh, right here we have the main screen uh, once you load and log into uh, the game. And... Uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, you can see uh, my current squad of heroes here. And uh, the, the main screen is uh, pretty interesting. It has a lot of information on it. Uh, and we'll start uh, at the top uh, and moving down uh, through the rest of the screen. At the top corner we have here the camp button. Basically it, this button uh, will take you to this uh, screen here from pretty much any point in the game. Uh, we also have some meters here. Uh, the first meter uh, with blue here is your overall player level and also a progress uh, bar uh, indicating how close uh, you are to getting to the next level. And we also have here uh, two meters of uh, energy in yellow and stamina in purple. And these represent how many battles you can uh, Participate in before it runs out uh, either through PvE uh, in gold or the uh, uh, PvP in purple there. So that's uh, pretty neat. There are two currencies uh, used in this game. Uh, we have coins over here represented uh, by the coin icon there. And also gems. And uh, also here uh, right in the middle of the main screen is a sort of a status update. It shows you uh, new uh, news uh, such as uh, available events you can participate in or challenges and also uh, stuff uh, that's uh, available in the uh, game store. On the left here uh, we have a little uh, mail uh, icon uh, to represent messages uh, you may uh, receive. And also uh, here uh, we have a gear uh, icon to represent uh, certain options you can set in the game. There are buttons uh, on the bottom row uh, and uh, we'll go over these. Uh, the uh, button on the left corner here is the store button where you, you can actually purchase uh, heroes or gems uh, on, on there. And uh, here on this button is a, what looks like a trophy. It's basically an achievement button. It shows you your current achievements, also uh, battle uh, statistics uh, when you have battled other players, and also your ranking uh, within uh, those battles through a ladder-like system. 
Here in the middle you have two sets of buttons. One on the left here is the heroes button where you can manage your squad of heroes uh, which is uh, pretty interesting. And the button to the right of that is called the gallery which you can access uh, basically an encyclopedia of the uh, characters that uh, you've either collected or encountered in battles. And uh, we have two buttons here on the right. Uh, a uh, uh, pair of buttons that uh, allow you to uh, get into the game to get your characters uh, fighting. Uh, one is uh, a PvE uh, accessible button called Quest uh, where you can actually go through various uh, maps uh, which have uh, various set battles within them and uh, also takes you through the lore of uh, Dragon Age and if you want to go through uh, PvP, I s sort of PvP I should say, through a battle system uh, where you can uh, battle other uh, players' squads uh, either through just a ladder ranked uh, match or uh, through an event or challenge. So uh, pretty uh, interesting. Now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the squad, uh, how you're uh, able to manage your squad. Again, uh, the main uh, uh, screen here shows your currently selected squad, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, you just go ahead and press the Heroes button, and that'll uh, load up the Heroes screen where you can manage your heroes. And uh, on the left is a, uh, I guess, a scrollable window of all of the heroes that you can collect. And uh, it's a uh, squad, I should say. And uh, you have a maximum of about 50 available uh, slots to fill in this squad window. And uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. And uh, below that are some buttons, uh, slotted buttons, of how many different types of squads you can assemble. Uh, you have uh, the first squad, uh, which is highlighted here, with a shield, which represents your, I guess, defensive squad or default squad when another player attempts to battle your uh, squad. And then you have other uh, available squads that you can load up with different configurations of heroes uh, that you can use when you go out on a quest or battle. So, uh, uh, you can have up to four, and uh, I believe uh, when you first start the game, you only have the first squad available, and uh, the three other uh, squad slots uh, become available as you level up. And as you can see, I haven't uh, have I don't have uh, all four available to me. I just have the first three. So uh, if you press the lock button on any one of the squads, it'll tell you what level you have to be in order to unlock it. And uh, for the fourth uh, squad slot, you have to be at least level 30. I'm currently level 20. So uh, now it looks like you can actually purchase uh, a squad slot if you want to. Uh, and it'll cost you gems in order to do that. So that's kind of neat. And um, basically... Uh, when uh, you first have a squad slot available, these areas uh, here will be empty. And in order to fill up your squad, uh, you just drag your hero or character uh, to a, an available squad here. And so that's uh, pretty interesting. Now the makeup of the squad uh, is uh, four basically uh, standard slots and a large slot. Uh, you can fit in these first four here uh, basically any uh, hero uh, or character uh, except for large size uh, characters. There is a there's one slot available for a large size uh, character uh, in the back there or on the side I should say where you can drag a larger sized character such as uh, my dragon there uh, pretty interesting or other large creatures such as uh, bears or deer or elemental type uh, creatures uh, which is pretty neat now over here on the uh, bottom uh, 
row here are two buttons that will take you directly either to the quest or uh, battle. Uh, basically the PvE or PvP uh, arenas or uh, battles. On the right you have other options available. Uh, you have what's called consume, combine, runes, and squad. Uh, and the currently highlighted one is squad here where you can assemble your squad. Now I have to mention that uh, the uh, makeup of the formation here is uh, made up of uh, rows, uh, either the front row here or the back row here, or columns uh, from either the front to the back. So you basically have two columns and two rows. And uh, that plays in a part in uh, assembling the strategy used uh, for your squad because certain characters have uh, different abilities that either affect just a single uh, uh, character or uh, their uh, ability affects a row of characters or affects a column of characters or affects all characters. So. There is uh, some strategy involved uh, when placing your heroes in a formation here. So you want to take that into account uh, when you get into that. Now, going back here to the squad uh, window here, uh, you can gain some statistics on a particular character by just uh, pressing on their card button here. And you just basically, uh, for example, I'll press this guy here, and that'll bring up a window about statistics of that particular character and in this case uh, this character is called Sebastian Vale and he is a tier 1 uh, character and we'll get into the tiers uh, in a little bit but uh, just going over this uh, quick window here you basically have the level of the uh, currently selected hero and the uh, maximum level he can attain uh, in his particular tier and also uh, here uh, you have these uh, four bubbles here and each uh, bubble is filled when they increase their tier ranking uh, and currently he's a tier one uh, character. Over here we have the experience bar and that just fills up as he gains experience and when he levels up uh, that pretty much empties or resets. And also we have some uh, Information here on uh, various uh, th uh, abilities of the character. We have a, uh, excuse me, but I thought I'd turn off the notifications on my tablet there, but apparently didn't. Uh, we have here uh, power, uh, which represents basically strength uh, and uh, ability to do damage. So the uh, more power this uh, character has, uh, the more damage he can deal. Uh, we have health. And that's represented uh, by how much health he has before dying. And then we also have a double damage chance, uh, ability to inflict crit damage or critical hit damage. Uh, and he has an 8% chance to do that. And you also have his uh, speed or initiative. Uh, and this goes into the account in the battles in which order he will attack uh, in the overall battle. And, uh, and he is actually quick to hit, so he's a quick hitter. He, he, he can get off his attack uh, much faster than other uh, characters. And also we have the special ability here. And uh, this varies uh, with the character. In, th in this particular case, Sebastian is able to attack one enemy and he gains uh, power on that attack. So uh, pretty uh, decent uh, character there and uh, you can click anywhere on the screen to close that uh, window now uh, I gotta also mention about these characters there are uh, different rarity of characters this is where the uh, collectible aspect comes in uh, there are different uh, uh, I believe four or five uh, different rarities uh, starting with common uh, which is represented by the color of the base that they're standing on or the the frame of the card. Uh, a common uh, character is uh, colored in brown or bronze. Let me just drag this guy here and you can see the frame here is uh, colored about bronze or brown. And that's a common uh, character. Uh, the next level in rarity is 
uncommon, which is represented in uh, silver there. And then you have the next uh, rarity available, which is a uh, rare represented in gold. And the next uh, rarity is epic. Uh, I already have them loaded here. Sebastian was an epic, which is colored in a deep orange color. Or reddish color, I guess you could say. And the last uh, rarity is called legendary. Uh, which is colored in green and I don't have any uh, legendaries uh, to play uh, at this point. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, characters uh, are uh, do have different tier levels and uh, what the different tier levels uh, represent uh, with these uh, characters are uh, basically increases in both uh, uh, I guess uh, the uh, the look of the character as well as uh, increases to the level cap that they can attain and increases of course uh, uh, in the power and health uh, which is uh, pretty interesting so uh, once you have a higher tier level character uh, you can uh, pretty much uh, expand upon uh, the the abilities of the character and let me just see if I have uh, characters of different tiers here and I think I do uh, this one here is a Karta assassin tier level one you can see his power is uh, relatively small uh, rated at 80 and has a health about 183 which is pretty decent for a common character and uh, he does attack uh, one enemy. Now I do have a, another tiered character I believe. No I don't. Uh, that's a bad example. <laughs> but uh, we can use that to show a uh, combining uh, ability here. Let me see if I can find... Uh... Oh yeah I, I do have another Carta Assassin here. Here's a Carta Assassin 4. Um, a tiered level 4. And you can see the bubbles all fill to the top. And he's level 7 but you can see that his level cap is increased to about 35. Let me go go back to the tier one assassin. You can see it was originally set at 20, but as you move up the tiers, you can level up uh, to a maximum, uh, increasing maximums. And go back to the Carter Assassin 4. Uh, his level cap is at 35. So, uh, and also the power does increase. Um, it, you really can't see it here, but uh, as you tear up uh, the available power, maximum power available uh, for the level does increase on here. And the d double damage here is something uh, not related to the tiering system. It's a more of a combining system. And actually, let's go ahead and uh, go over the uh, combining and consuming of characters. Now, uh, Due to the collectible nature of the game, you can collect multiple versions of the characters. Uh, as you saw earlier, I had different Carta Assassins. I had two uh, Tier 1 Carta Assassins and a Tier 4 uh, Carta Assassin. And uh, you may be wondering, uh, what am I going to do with all of these uh, multiples of characters? Uh, especially when you only have four uh, squad uh, slots to fill and a large squad uh, large squad uh, slot to fill and uh, you can fill all four if you want uh, of your multiple uh, card assassins for example or multiple characters of the same tier um, but uh, also uh, to manage space in a bit because uh, you only have a maximum of 50 characters uh, uh, that you can have you can actually uh, combine and consume characters uh, and uh, what that means and we'll start off with uh, combining and uh, we'll hit the combine button here what you can do is you can uh, combine uh, a couple of characters of the same type and uh, you can combine their abilities to create a higher tiered level character and in this case uh, it shows that I have a two tier one uh, Carta Assassins that I combine. I also have uh, here a, um, let me see if I can press, a 
coterie thief. Now, uh, I have a coterie thief that's a tier three, as well as a coterie thief that's a tier one. You can still combine those because they are the same uh, type of characters. They may have different tiers, uh, but they are the same type of character. And this allows you to combine them to increase the tier level uh, by combining a character. You just drag uh, one of your characters in one of the available circles here, and it'll uh, drag this particular one, and it's a level four tier three coterie assassin. And we'll drag the other Coterie Thief, who was a level 1, uh, tier 1 Coterie Assassin. And by hitting the Combine button, they will merge into a single character that has become a tier 4 character, which is pretty cool. And you can see the graphic has been changed as well. So uh, as they go from level or tier 1, Two tier four, they be their graphic changes to include either a nicer looking piece of armor, armor or weaponry, and so it's a kind of a neat thing to have there. And you can also see that the bars are now filled because it's the tier four. The level cap has increased uh, to uh, level thirty five, which is cool, and uh, the power and health have also um, increased. Uh, per level so uh, pretty cool now what hasn't really changed are the double damage uh, hit chance and the uh, the uh, initiative or speed of the character the speed uh, never changes uh, but the double d uh, damage uh, chance does change and that's through uh, consuming and we'll get into that uh, after this but if uh, you want to combine again just go ahead and hit uh, combine again and uh, it'll take you back to the combine window where if you have available characters co to combine, you can do that. And I have, of course, the Carta, two Carta Assassins. Now, once your character reaches Tier 4, you're no longer able to combine uh, that particular uh, Tier 4 character because it's at the maximum. So that, that's why the Tier 4 Carta Assassin doesn't show up on here. But if you had like three or four uh, uh, characters of uh, lower... Um, tiers uh, from three to one uh, they will show up here yeah, but i only have two at the moment so we'll combine two of these guys and uh, they're both tier one so they should become a tier two and uh, it has a slightly improved look it looks like he has a little bit better armor there so kind of neat and also uh, we have here uh the uh, statistics improve statistics uh, for uh, this particular character. So uh, you can just uh, either hit combine again if you have more, or if you don't have more, it'll take you back to the combine screen. And also, you have three other buttons here that are available that I did not show earlier. Ba basically, you have a, a battle button if you want to go directly to a battle. You have the uh, character uh, management screen button here in the middle and then you have the quest button here so we're gonna go ahead and go to the uh, basically the uh, character uh, management screen and uh, next uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at the consume button uh, in uh, a little bit uh, since I'm running out of space on my card here uh, on the video so uh, but we'll be uh, right back Okay, we're back and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the consume option. Now, consuming is a little bit different than combining. Uh, the, some of the elements are still the same where you actually uh, merge uh, characters together. But through consuming, uh, you do not have to have the uh, characters of the same type uh, in order to be merged. Uh, you can merge uh, basically five different uh, characters uh, into a single uh, character and uh, by consuming the the one that's doing the consuming or eating uh, basically eats up all of the uh, experience as uh, well as uh, the uh, double damage uh, hit chance of the other characters that are being consumed 
uh, which is uh, pretty neat. Now, uh, it obviously does not tear up because uh, the characters being consumed are usually uh, not of the same type, although you can consume characters of the same type. But uh, the character that's doing the consuming will not tear up in this case. Now, uh, to show an example of uh, consuming, let's go ahead and uh, I want to... I want to improve my uh, Corypheus uh, character, which I uh, was able to attain uh, through an event uh, just recently. Taking a look at the stats of Corypheus here, he's a level 11, uh, he's a tier 1, and uh, he has uh, 233 power, 600 health, uh, pretty decent. He's an epic hit character. So uh, a more unique character and uh, harder to find. Uh, he currently has a double damage uh, chance of 5%. And I've consumed other characters previously to this video to increase uh, the uh, percentage of that. Uh, all characters essentially start out with 1% double damage. Uh, but by consuming, you can increase that. And uh, also taking a look at here, he is a uh, slow to hit, so he's a slow hitter. Uh, his attacks don't come off until later in the round. And uh, his special uh, ability is to attack and drain power from all enemies. So when he hits, uh, all of his opponents, uh, of course, suffer damage and also uh, decrease their power level. So uh, they don't inflict as much damage uh, when they do attack. So that's kind of neat uh, for this particular character. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and consume uh, other characters. Uh, and Usually, uh, I tend to consume uh, all of the extra uh, characters that I don't uh, use. Uh, a lot of them are, are usually common characters uh, because uh, uh, when you start off the game, uh, you, you tend to use uh, more of the common characters, but later on when you acquire more powerful heroes and characters such as epics and rares and legendaries, uh, you tend to use the common characters a little bit less. Uh, so I guess the, the main function later in the game of common characters is to be consumed. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do is uh, consume some uh, folks here. Now... Uh, me personally, I like to combine characters t that are going to be consumed before being consumed. I like to tear them up, uh, uh, up first before uh, they are sacrificed to be consumed. And, but uh, in this case, we'll just use this as an example. We have that uh, uh, a coterie thug who's at tier level 2. And uh, let me just uh, show this window here. You can see that uh, Corypheus has five slots uh, or any character that's doing the consuming will have five slots available to fill uh, to consume and uh, so essentially I'll drag uh, this thug here into an open slot it'll show you how much of an increase in the double damage that Corypheus will uh, acquire and let me uh, take a look at this guy here this is a, a card of thug four and we'll drag him there and uh, you can see that the double damage chance increases even more and uh, you're not limited just to consuming common you can consume uh, uncommon even rares even epics or legendaries if other legendaries if you want uh, I'm not sure why you would want to sacrifice a legendary uh, you'd have to have a pretty decent reason to do so I'm not or if you're just crazy enough to do it. <laughs> but me personally, I wouldn't consume any legendaries. But uh, we can consume here. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll consume uh, this uh, uh, this guy here. Let me see if I can highlight him. Whoops. The Carta Assassin that we combined earlier in the video. We'll drag him here as well. Now, uh, you don't have to fill all five slots. You can just consume one if you want but you you have the ability to consume one to five uh, different characters and when you're ready to consume you just hit the consume button and you can see how the experience is uh, combined into Corypheus uh, he's now level 12 also I don't know if you saw it earlier but uh, 
his uh, double damage chance increased uh, by not much, um, 1%. Uh, so now he has a 6% chance of dealing double damage, uh, which is pretty neat. Now, uh, you can do that as many times as you want. Uh, you can hit, just hit the consume again button there. Uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, the basic gist of consuming. Uh, either to manage the size of your available uh, characters or if you want to power up uh, some of your characters without having to grind through battles. So uh, that's uh, pretty cool. Now, uh, speaking of that double damage, I forgot to mention... Uh, the uh, formation of your squad has certain bon bonuses uh, where you place your characters. Now, if you place your characters on the uh, front row here, uh, they gain an inherent bonus uh, to health. Uh, they become tougher and harder to kill. Uh, so you want to uh, put uh, characters, main, uh, maybe tanks, tank type characters in the front so, where, so they can uh, absorb the, the damage they are able to absorb currently and a, an additional bonus by being in the front rank. Of course you can put it however you want. You don't have to put tanks. You know, but if you, uh, but uh, any characters in the front row uh, gain a uh, health uh, bonus. Now characters on in the back row uh, they gain a double damage increase bonus so they have an increased chance on top of their current uh, double damage chance of uh, inflicting double damage so that's kinda neat so if I had placed uh, Corypheus in the back his uh, a double damage hit chance will improve uh, uh, beyond uh, I think it was six percent uh, of what he had so placement of your characters in the in, in certain positions do have uh, inherent bonuses now I also have to mention I did not uh, mention earlier that characters belong to factions uh, different colored factions and uh, uh, you could see that on the base itself uh, the circular base uh, depends on the faction they belong to and also the color uh, of the background on the card. Uh, there are essentially four type of factions. Uh, a blue faction, a red faction, a white faction, and a black colored uh, faction. Now uh, thematically uh, the blue colored faction uh, are essentially magic wielders, uh, mages, and uh, those who use uh, magic attacks and stuff like that. Uh, the white colored faction represents, I don't know if you want to call it do-gooders, uh, knights, uh, that, those kind of folk. Uh, the uh, red color faction represents a uh, the outlaw type faction, uh, those uh, like thugs, assassins, and those just uh, not associated with do-gooder type attitudes. Uh, they don't have to be uh, evil necessarily. And the uh, black colored faction represents, uh, I, like, I, I like to say the undead, because uh, uh, that's essentially what the makeup of most of uh, that colored faction, uh, like zombies or uh, Genlock uh, characters. Uh, like the dark spawn and all that kind of neat stuff. Now, uh, large uh, sized uh, characters, um, I have a couple here, such as uh, Hala, uh, this deer. The, I don't know if they belong to a faction or not. Uh, uh, Sylvan there. So, um, they seem to be a makeup of, of all different types, uh, but uh, they're just categorized under large size. Now, also, characters belong to split factions. Uh, they can belong to both a red and blue faction, for example. I don't have any split faction characters at the moment. Uh, I, at least I don't think so. Oh yeah, I do. I do have this guy here. Uh, he represents, let me just click up, the Grey Warden Mage. And uh, he represents a blue-white split faction. So uh, characters can belong to different factions. Now, Factions also has what is similar to, in Magic the Gathering, the color uh, dominance. Uh, certain colors uh, dominate over uh, different colors, or fa different factions dominate uh, uh, other factions. And I can't remember off the top of my head, I believe 
uh, black colored factions dominate over white and white may dominate over red or blue or I can't remember and red dominates uh, blue or white and uh, the uh, blue or white dominates over black I, I can't remember what it is exactly but uh, it's a circular type of dominance where one has dominance over one other color and uh, uh, it, and it shows up during the load screens for battles uh, every once in a while. So you, you could see that there. Uh, we may see it uh, when we load a battle. But uh, uh, when uh, one character attacks another character that has dominance uh, over the, uh, the the character being attacked, uh, there are gainus, there are bonuses, uh, I believe, to power and also uh, coins received during the battle. So, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. So that has into play also uh, in the makeup of your squad so a lot of options available in squad placement uh, squad ability and squad type uh, so uh, you can uh, have uh, lots of fun uh, combining different types of uh, heroes together heroes and villains and uh, together to make up a uh, real neat combinations on there so pretty cool and it may affect especially during pve where a lot of uh, squads in PvE uh, belong to certain factions, so uh, pretty neat. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look uh, back to the main screen here. Now, you may be wondering, uh, there's a little pop-up window that uh, shows up uh, some news information. How do you actually collect heroes? Uh, you can collect heroes in, in a couple different ways. Uh, you can collect heroes through events. Uh, as you progress through an event, uh, a certain character may be available for you to pick up, uh, which is pretty neat. But the main uh, uh, way to uh, collect heroes is through the store, through purchases. And uh, we'll go into that. And uh, we'll go into the store. You just press the store button. And uh, essentially, you can pick up uh, characters through what they call packs. Now, uh, this uh, format is very similar to uh, collectible card games, where you pick, uh, you physically purchase uh, randomized packs, and you don't know what you're going to get, and uh, until you open them. And uh, this works in a in a similar way, and a little bit uh, different. Uh, in a sense, uh, a pack contains only one randomized uh, character uh, and all a potential of a randomized rune, and we'll get into runes uh, in a little bit. But uh, basically, you have different packs uh, you can purchase from the store, which is kind of neat. Uh, the first couple of uh, packs that are available are a sort of a rotating type of uh, pack uh, uh, every once in a while uh, the game will uh, have a uh, certain pack available that you can purchase uh, and in this case it's currently currently called the legacy pack and uh, to gain inf more information about that particular pack you just hit the main picture here and it'll tell you what is in this particular pack. And in this case, a legacy pack contains one guaranteed rare or better hero in every pack. Guaranteed legendary hero in one of your first 20 packs. Guaranteed a rare or better rune in every pack. So uh, essentially, a legacy pack will uh, contain a rare hero or better. Either a rare, epic, or legendary uh, character. And uh, for every 20 packs you purchase, so you'll get at least one guaranteed uh, uh, legacy, a uh, legendary, sorry. So uh, pretty cool. Now uh, the cost of purchasing uh, that uh, particular pack is, in this case, 59 uh, gems. So you'd have to uh, spend 59 gems to purchase a pack. Now uh, I have to mention the... Uh, the currency uh, used in this uh, particular uh, game. Currency is uh, used uh, either uh, coins or gems. Uh, the more common currency in the game is coins. Uh, you gain coins for uh, battles uh, within PvE, PvP, or events. And you also uh, uh, acquire another form of currency called gems. 
And gems are a harder to acquire uh, currency. Uh, you gain it through achievements or uh, through events. Uh, you do not gain them uh, usually through a PvE or PvP battle. There are certain cases, uh, but not uh, every case. Uh, so I just want to mention that uh, coins are more common to acquire than gems. And uh, so you really have to think about it uh, uh, when you want to purchase a pack that requires uh, gems. Uh, currently, I've been playing this game for about a week and I've accumulated 160 gems so far. So, But they are uh, not as easy to acquire uh, than coins. Uh, the next couple slots here are uh, pretty much fixed slots. Uh, these packs usually do not change. Uh, they have what's called a recruit pack and a soldier pack. And these uh, two, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, the second one here is uh, a, another rotating one. This is the uh, basically purchasing 10 legacy packs instead of a single legacy pack. And uh, you can see uh, it's a lot more expensive, but I think it's cheaper than purchasing 10 individual legacy packs. You have a little bit of savings there, but uh, not uh, too much savings. Uh, but back to the recruit packs here uh, and soldier packs. These are fixed packs that do not change. Uh, I don't think the prices uh, change at all either. And you can see they require coins to purchase. Uh, uh, a recruit pack uh, costs 350 uh, coins, while a soldier pack costs f uh, 1,500 coins. And essentially a recruit pack uh, guarantees uh, at least... Uh, a common character so uh, basically uh, the l you're guaranteed a character no matter what you're uh, most likely will be a common character but there is a chance that you uh, can acquire an uncommon a rare an epic or even a legendary uh, pack uh, the chances of acquiring those higher uh, rarity figures or characters uh, is not as great uh, Especially uh, the higher you go, like uh, the legendary, it was a very minuscule chance. Uh, it is possible, but do not really expect to find a legendary in a recruit pack. Most oftentimes, uh, it'll be a common uh, character, or or a uh, every once in a while, an uncommon, uh, rarely a rare, um, very little chance of an epic or legendary. So. Uh, you have 350 coins in order to purchase that if you want. Now a soldier pack uh, guarantees at least uncommon or better. Um, I don't believe you will ever receive a common character in a soldier pack. So uh, chances are most likely you'll receive an uncommon character. But uh, there are chances of getting rares, epics, or legendaries. I've purchased several soldier packs already, and I've received a, a several rares. I have yet to receive any epics or uh, legendaries at this point, but uh, there is a possibility doing that. Uh, the cost of this is 1,500 coins, though. So, uh, And uh, the last two that I've seen available are, are fixed positions as well. And uh, they require gems to purchase, and uh, they're called champion packs. And a champion pack, I believe, is guaranteed a uh, guaranteed rare or better, or or creature or large. Uh, it's it's guaranteed a character or large character, but a guaranteed rare. Uh, so you have a rare or better uh, chance of getting a character. So you can either get a rare, epic, or legendary. And uh, also, it costs 38 gems, so a little bit less than the rotating packs of, uh, like this case, the legendary. So it's uh, entirely up to you whether you want to purchase uh, what pack you want and uh, how, what you want to spend uh, on there. So uh, pretty interesting. Now, at the top tab here, you have heroes and gems. This is uh, gems. If you click on that. Uh, is another uh, option here uh, where you can purchase gems using your real world currency and uh, me my uh, personally uh, I do not <laughs> want to spend 
any money on a game that uh, I've already uh, d downloaded uh, and is able to play for free. Now, uh, this format of game is a pay-to-win type of game where it does cost money if you want to to win at this game. Uh, basically, you want to be at the top of the leaderboards. You want to be uh, uh, at the top of the events. Uh, it's most likely uh, the type of person who would uh, spend uh, gems and acquire gems by spending real money through it. Now, me personally, uh, I'm a casual player. I w rarely, if ever, will spend any real money to play a, 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 a mobile app a game. And uh, so far, I've, I've really only spent uh, $1 so far. And it was for a, a special type of pack they had for one-time uh, uh, purchase uh, of an Epic. Uh, and that's how I was able to get Sebastian. I was able to purchase him for 99 cents. And that's probably the, as far as I'll go, personally, in purchasing anything uh, real-world in the game. Uh, but uh, if if you want to, it's up to you. You can purchase uh, gems in order to use those gems in either events, and we'll go into that in a little bit. Or if you want to purchase uh, those uh, uh, packs, if you don't have enough gems to do it. So, but uh, you have that option available to, for the in-app uh, purchases. And according to this, it's currently set to two dollars for twenty-two gems, which to me doesn't seem uh, worth it at all. Uh, and uh, also, um, you have uh, increasing costs for increasing number of gems up to, it looks like, uh, what they call a best value of 1,600 gems for $99.99. So if you want to spend 100 bucks to get 1,600 gems, that's really up to you. And of course, they also show you here that you can acquire gems uh, through mastering uh, quests. And uh, they don't mention it, but you can also acquire gems through events. And uh, we'll go into that in a little bit. But that's the store option. And just to demonstrate, um, basically, I'll purchase uh, the Recruit Pack. And uh, we'll go th uh, show you uh, what it's like uh, when you open a pack and see what you get. And uh, to purchase a pack, you basically press on any of the buttons below the packs here in order to... Uh, purchase and open the pack so uh, and I'm going to go ahead and spend 350 coins to purchase this uh, particular uh, recruit pack and just press that and you can see the randomization going on there and what we have uh, is a common character a uh, Carta Thug, uh, which I already had. I th well, I think I had because I sacrificed him or consumed him. But we have a Carta Thug. Now, uh, you have an option to buy another uh, pa common uh, or recruit pack. Uh, you can just press that button or you can hit done and take you back to the uh, uh, pack or store screen. And uh, also, you could see uh, the stats for the particular character that uh, you were able to acquire. And just for um, S and G, uh, we're going to go ahead and buy another one there. And you can skip the cinematic if you want, but I don't usually. And in, as you can see, I was able to acquire a an uncommon character. So... Uh, the chances of acquiring a better rarity card uh, is there. So that's kind of neat. I was able to acquire an uncommon uh, character uh, for the uh, price of a common uh, pack. So pretty cool. Uh, this character is uh, Kara Shock, uh, tier level 1, of course. They uh, essentially all start out at tier level 1. And uh, he has pretty decent health for his level. And, uh, okay, nah, mediocre power for his, uh, and he only attacks one enemy, so, uh, nothing too special, and he's a normal hitter, so, nothing too special, but I do have another Karashuk, so I can combine him, uh, later on if I wanted to, so, pretty neat, uh, that's, uh, the store button there. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at here at goals. And, and this is essentially achievements uh, that you acquire in-game. Uh, if you do certain things in the game, you attain a certain achievement and you get a reward type system. And uh, either th uh, extra gold uh, coins 
or even uh, extra gems. So that's uh, another way of acquiring gems is through achievements. And uh, there's a number here at the top corner here indicating that I have two goals that I've uh, managed to acquire. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. You press that button and that should bring up uh, the uh, goals window. And there are three tabs uh, at the uh, top there. And the currently highlighted one is my events. And I had participated in, in an event uh, just in the past couple days. Uh, it was the Chaos Match event. And uh, actually I attended two previous events. Uh, but the first event uh, that I uh, was able to join, uh, I was only able to join it as it was ending in, a, in, in two hours. So I didn't really participate. And it shows my ranking here. I was at ranking... 93,379 in the last couple hours of that particular uh, event and uh, it looks like I did not acquire anything uh, which is not surprising since I was able to attend it at the end of the event but uh, this most recent event that I attended uh, was a three-day event chaos match event and I was able to acquire a few things uh, during that event I was able to acquire uh, coins uh, essentially almost 70,000 coins uh, and some gems, enough gems to to keep where I was at. Uh, I spent some gems uh, during the event to do refreshes uh, to my uh, stamina um, but overall at the end of the event I pretty much uh, ended up uh, with the same number of gems that I started out with which is kind of cool And but it looks like uh, if you place during a certain event which is uh, Part of the new update that uh, went in during this event, uh, depending on where you place, you can have a bonus of a number of gems acquired, which is pretty cool. And I placed uh, in this most recent event at 14,109. Uh, I almost finished all of the objectives uh, in that particular event. I did not get to the top uh, by the end of the three days of that event. but. For participating in that event and placing in uh, fourteen thousand, I was I got a reward of five gems, which is pretty neat. So then this again is part of a new update they implemented uh, into the game. So which is cool. I think if you place in the first one hundred, you get like thirty gems. And you and you place with the next five hundred, you get twenty, and if you place in the first thousand. Uh, you get uh, 10 and essentially if you just participate in the event at all <laughs> you know, you'll get five gems so that's kind of neat and in order to uh, get those gems added uh, you just hit the claim button okay we're back I'm sorry uh, we were interrupted there but as you can see the gems were added into my pool of gems so, uh, which is cool now uh, going uh, over to this tab we have achievements uh, that we were able to uh, attain in game and uh, they list a whole bunch of different things that I did in game and that I was able to accomplish which is uh, pretty neat and you can see some of the rewards here are gems and uh, coins and there are some of them have different tier levels uh, of requirements uh, that start out with coins and uh, uh, end up uh, with gems, but uh, which is uh, pretty neat and uh, the most recent uh, Achievement that I was able to accomplish uh, that I have yet to claim here is a critical thinker one uh, achievement uh, I achieved uh, three double damage hits I guess in a single game uh, which is uh, pretty cool and uh, for doing that I get a reward for 100 coins and uh, this particular achievement has different tier levels on here. I'll hit the claim and uh, receive my 100 coins, uh, which is cool. And it looks like the next tier level uh, for the next reward, I would need to get uh, 20 uh, double damage hits. Uh, so, well, I'm not sure if that's in a single game. Uh, that seems kind of excessive. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure how they're tallying that to be 
to be certain. But uh, anyways, uh, the next reward would be 500 coins. So uh, pretty neat on the achievements there. And down below here, it shows you total uh, coin achievements, uh, how many I've accomplished and how many... Uh, total uh, there are available as well as gems uh, on there and uh, number of achievements on this uh, right hand corner uh, the next tab here is called battles which uh, show you uh, how you uh, fared in certain uh, battles uh, through uh, pvp or events or possibly challenges uh, and it looks like uh, uh, Listed in uh, most uh, recent uh, order here, uh, it looks like someone, uh, Leliana, uh, attacked me uh, seven hours ago, uh, or at least uh, participated in a battle uh, where uh, my uh, character, my uh, team was selected. It looks like I lost. <laughs> and uh, like I said, any other player who selects you in a battle will battle your uh, number one uh, slotted uh character position uh with that was represented with the shield so whatever was in uh whatever uh character roster was in that slot uh it was what uh, leliana had battled and it looks like she won in that uh, the other uh, battles i attacked uh, certain people and i won or lost and it shows you how much experience i gained uh in that battle so uh, that's kind of cool it keeps track of that uh, a lot of the most recent ones had to do with uh, uh, the event that I participated in that ended yesterday. So, uh, pretty cool. It uh, looks like uh, someone tried to uh, uh, chose me as a uh, as an opponent during an event, and I was able to successfully defend uh, using uh, whatever was in my uh, slotted uh, uh, character roster. So that's kind of neat there. Uh, that's the goals there. Uh, one thing I wanted to go uh, over real quickly, I forgot to do, uh, was the runes. And uh, runes are interesting. They're essentially uh, power-ups for your team. Uh, you can add uh, runes. Uh, you can see uh, up to two runes. And, uh, and they, they, they affect every member of your team, essentially. And you have different types of runes of different types of rarities, again, uh, represented by the colors. Uh, br uh, brown or copper is a common rune. Silver runes are uncommon. Gold runes are rare. Uh, red runes are uh, epic, and green runes are legendary. And uh, you see I have one legendary rune, and it was uh, for participating in an event i was able to claim uh, that particular rune as a reward for uh, attaining a certain position and uh, you can see uh, some stats here uh, very much like the character uh, roster you just click on a rune to find out more information about it and uh, this one is a rune of power and uh, it increases the power of every hero in your squad and it increases it by 25 percent uh, the thing with runes is that uh, they are temporary. Uh, when you acquire heroes, uh, when you purchase uh, packs and stuff, uh, you keep them as long as you uh, you have them. Uh, whether uh, you uh, you keep them or you consume them or uh, combine them, uh, but uh, they're there uh, uh, for as long as uh, you uh, have them. Uh, runes are temporary. Once you uh, acquire a rune either through a PvP as a reward or PvE as a reward or as a, a part of a pack that you opened, uh, they do expire. And in this particular case, uh, this particular rune expires in five days. Uh, I acquired it a couple days ago, so essentially a, a week uh, that um, you get uh, this uh, a rune to use. Uh, once uh, the expiration hits, it pretty much disappears from your uh, roster here. So they are temporary. They also are temporary in how long they last when you use them. Once you uh, uh, use a rune, uh, they last for various amounts of times depending on the rune and the, the rarity. In this case, this particular rune of power will only last 5 minutes once I activate it. 
so uh, you really want to use it when you really need it uh, in this particular case some runes last a little bit longer like this one lasts about 10 minutes uh, there are some that last half an hour on there I don't know if there are any that last longer than that I thought I saw one that lasted for at least five hours I can't remember if uh, where that might have been it might have been one I've already used um, but I thought I saw one for that lasted uh, at least uh, five hours or more uh, but uh, what you do to use these runes uh, you have these two slots here and you essentially drag the rune over to uh, one of the two or both slots and then uh, you just press the activate button and that will essentially start the timer on uh, the usage of that rune so uh, that's kind of cool uh, just going over some of the other runes that are uh, available this uh, particular rune is called a rune of slow targeting it'll place your squad's uh, hit priority uh, on the slowest member of the other team uh, that you're attacking. Uh, some of them uh, grant XP for your hero uh, when you uh, win or lose a battle. So uh, some of them uh, here, let me press on that, uh, increases the power of every hero in your squad. Uh, a lot of them uh, I have are targeting. Uh, increase the stun resistance of every hero in your squad. So that's... Uh, pretty useful. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, you're interrupted again because uh, my battery had run out. But uh, th those are the different types of runes uh, that you have available and that's uh, kind of neat. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, take a peek at actual uh, battles and stuff. Uh, once you have the team that you uh, want to use, and uh, let me go ahead and select... Uh, my squad. I think I selected different uh, heroes here. I have a certain setup I like to use for certain situations. Uh, here I have slot one. Uh, basically I use uh, this particular group uh, in uh, uh, PvP battles. Uh, battling other players uh, rosters or uh, having uh, other players uh, select this particular roster because it's in slot one. Uh, but I usually use this particular uh, squad for battles and then I usually use uh, this squad uh, for quests uh, and PvE battles. Uh, it's not much different. The only difference here is I'm trying to level up uh, my uh, guy over here. Um, I forget what he's called. Uh, but he's a pretty decent uh, figure here. He's the Grey Warden Mage, I believe. Yeah, uh, the Grey Warden Mage. And uh, per to participate in a uh, PvP or PvE battle, again, you can use uh, one of the two buttons that are provided, a quest button or a battle button. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go over the PvE or questing portion of uh, this. And uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, the way PvE works is that there are several maps, there are a total of 10 maps in this uh PVE section you hit the map button here and you can see uh, all of these different maps uh, they're essentially uh, lore from the Dragon Age uh, storyline uh, either in the past or present uh, I'm not sure about the future I don't know too much about Dragon Age lore but uh, certainly some events occurred during the past and you participate in those in a, in a sort of what-if type scenario using the squad that you've selected and each particular map has different battles. There are a set number of battles in each of them. You scroll through the currently selected one, and it looks like it's number six for me. And you can see uh, several icons on here. Let me just close up this uh, map uh, select button. And you can see a little trail uh, with certain points along uh, the map over here and essentially they are uh, storyline modes uh, that you go through this particular story uh, different map uh, nodes you could say and uh, here uh, it shows uh, in this uh, little window uh, of the current selected battle within this storyline 
And I'm not sure, let me see if I can bring up. Uh, it doesn't uh, bring up an overall storyline of the particular uh, map, uh, but I thought it did. But anyways, uh, you select a particular node, and it'll tell you where in the storyline you are, and it has some information on here as well. Uh, let me just select where I'm currently at. Uh, basically, when you uh, participate in a battle and you successfully uh, win that battle, you move along the timeline of this particular map. And I'm currently at this position here, which has been unlocked. It tells you the status, it tells you a brief description of the story. And, uh, and over here, it'll tell you the rewards for winning this particular battle. Uh, and if I win this particular battle, it'll give me 148 coins and 169 experience. Now, I'm, as far as the experience goes, I don't know if that's split amongst the heroes and the player, or if it's uh, each or uh, or what. I I I, ne I was never too clear on that. Uh, but uh, if you want to participate in that battle, you hit the enter button in the corner. And that'll load up uh, the particular battle. And uh, we'll see uh, what we're up against here. Taking a little bit. Usually doesn't take as long uh, for me. There we go. And uh, as you can see, here's a battle layout. And you can see my currently selected squad is squad 2 over here and you can see the layout of all of my characters. And on the other side, uh, you can see all of the uh, opponents uh, battlefield layout and this particular particular um, uh, squad here does not have a large creature it's just four uh, characters here and uh, here uh, also you can see uh, any runes that you have activated uh, currently I don't have any runes activated and this window here tells you who the opponent is uh, it tells you that it's unlocked that's the status of that and it tells you its relative uh, rating of this battle it it's based on the characters, the positions, and uh, uh, the tier levels of the characters. The computer generates some sort of uh, uh, guesstimation as how it thinks uh, you will fare in uh, this battle. Uh, now, this battle uh, is non-interactive. Uh, once you start the fight button, you, you basically just watch the progression of the battle and see how well you do. Uh, which is a... Uh, some folks may have an issue of it. They don't have control of the characters. Uh, I don't mind. This is a mobile type app. Uh, I, 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 no, I see more fun in, in assembling and laying out your heroes more than actual battle itself. Uh, but uh, it's a non-interactive battle. And uh, it basically just plays out how, based on the initiative of the characters on both sides, uh, the abilities and uh, uh, other factors of position on the battlefield, uh, how this battle will turn out. Uh, but also, uh, can, before we get start the battle, we have information here. Again, the rewards for winning. Uh, and you also have uh, options here where you can actually retreat. And basically, that will just take you out to the previous screen. So if you find that it, uh, it it's guesstimated to be uh, too hard for you to win, you can always back out. So that's a, a neat thing to do. Let's just go back into it here. And uh, if you want to participate in this battle, uh, you can use your currently selected squad, or if you want to switch out uh, different squads, you can. So uh, that's kind of neat. You can see that once I change squads, it actually re-rates how you, well you do depending on uh, the makeup of your uh, particular uh, group. And in this case, it changed the guesstimation to medium. So this one, I m may win or may lose, uh, but uh, it's really uh, up in the air. Um, but I'm going to go with my uh, main questing squad here, where it's ranked easy. Uh, now, I've actually lost battles where it was ranked easy. So uh, there is a certain element of randomness uh, in the game uh, based on uh, damage levels, double damage applications and uh, such. So uh, this is really just more of a computerized guesstimation of how well you do. 
Now, if you want to fight uh, this uh, particular battle, you go ahead and press this button. Now, this button tells you that it will use one uh, flask of energy or one bubble of energy. And uh, you can see here uh, the bubble of energy for PvE is uh, metered into six segments. Uh, basically, I have six battles I can participate in before that's completely depleted. And uh, what's nice about this is that it does refresh over real time. And you can gain uh, 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 an estimation of how, uh, when the next refill occurs. Now, since I'm currently full, uh, there is no refresh. You just press that bar and it'll tell you uh, that uh, it'll, when the next refresh of, the, of a pip or bubble on that uh, meter will be replenished. And it re usually replenishes, I'd say, one bubble every 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I think. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And you do have an option of immediately refilling. It's like, say, if you uh, lost the battle and you had no more energy to use, but you wanted to fight that battle again because you thought you could win it, and you wanted to... Uh, fight right away instead of waiting for a refresh uh, you can actually instantly refresh your meter by spending some gems and in this case it's three gems to immediately refill a uh, bar or a f to a full bar now i usually don't do this um, personally uh, for a pve but i've done refreshes for uh, events and uh, pvp uh, that's where I spend the majority of my gems uh, in the game. So, But it's really entirely up to you. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start a battle here and just hit the fight button. button and uh, it'll load up the uh, battle screen. And you can watch the battle uh, progress. And uh, the computer manages the battle for you based on initiative, characters... And here, in case I did a double damage here, and uh, I got some bonus coins for doing that. And I just killed my dragon. And uh, it moves at a relatively quick pace, at least on this device. Uh, but you can actually fast forward it by hitting the fast forward button here. But me personally, I don't uh, do that because I like to see... Uh, what's going on during the battle, how much damage is inflicted, whether they got stunned, if they got a double damage bonus here like I just did now. So uh, pretty cool. And it uh, looks like I won this battle. And uh, once it um, uh, finishes, it gives you a summary screen. Uh, how much damage I dealt in the battle, how much the opponent dealt, uh, how much the starting health before the battle began. Uh, how many double damages uh, I was able to apply during the battle, uh, how many faction hits I was able to apply. In this case, uh, the opponent had more uh, faction bonus hits uh, than I did. They had some units that were color dominant uh, over me. And uh, who the MVP is of each team, I think this is based on how much damage is dealt overall during the battle. I'm not sure. Uh, and also, oh, looks like I got a new pack, a Legacy Heroes, uh, a little pop-up window. And also, how many survival, survivors at the end of the battle. So, uh, that's kind of a neat information screen. Also, here it tells you how many coins I earned. Uh, this is prior to the winning of coins uh, for the set battle. Uh, these are coins I was able to earn either through double damage applications or uh, faction hits. And in this case I earned 75 and it looks like it was most all of it due to uh, double damage dealing. So uh, kind of cool there. And you just tap the screen to continue. Oh I forgot to mention there are rounds in, the, in this game. So uh, there are a maximum of 10 rounds uh, that your opponents, you and your opponents battle through. And uh, at the end of 10 rounds, whoever has the most total health, uh, you can see it represented in this bar meter bar here, uh, wins the battle. In this case, I barely uh, survived. You know, I had several guys uh, be killed, uh, or a couple guys be killed, and uh, and the it took a toll on my dad team makeup because these uh, life meters represent your total squad's uh, health 
on there so but i want it in three rounds there so that's kind of kind of cool just press the screen to continue and you'll get a screen here if this is the first time you've battled this node uh it tells you uh, i won and i'll give you rewards for this and uh i totaled uh, 169 experience which is set and also won 223 now this is uh from the set number of coins and the bonus uh, coins i earned in the game and uh, of course the members of your team and you have buttons here whether you want to go to the store or go to the main quest screen or the main uh, character select screen so uh, that's kind of cool and you can see i was depleted one uh, pip or uh, one uh, button of uh, energy there and if you hit the energy now you can see the next refresh is going to occur at in 13 minutes 32 seconds and uh, that will refresh one single pip and then uh, or if you like I said if you want to refill it immediately you can just spend the three gems to do it now there's another button here it says next quest and it'll take you back to the map screen and move you further along uh, so that's kind of uh, neat there and once you get to the end of this particular map usually uh, the, the rewards for this uh, end uh, ga uh, battle here involves uh, gems in addition to coins and experience so that's kind of cool now another thing is that you do not have to progress linear 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 uh, in a linear linear fashion excuse me uh, you can go back to past battles and master battles and uh, what's kind of let's go to a different map let's go to the previous map here you can see I've uh, conquered the this particular map uh, you can see it by the status change on there with a gem now there are different statuses uh, you saw the fist in uh, this one let me go back Oop. the fist is your currently uh, unlocked uh, battle but once you conquer a battle, it'll change to this icon here. And uh, you can replay this battle by pressing that. And uh, you can replay it uh, un until you actually master it. And uh, you can see here, uh, the status here changed to mastery instead of unlocked. Uh, since I've already uh, beaten this um, battle at least once. Uh, and uh, according to this, it's one of five. So if I play this and win it, uh, at least five times I will master this map and essentially uh, play, mastering a map will grant you an additional uh, set of gems in addition to the coins and experience on there so uh, that's kind of cool uh, going to some previous maps uh, where I've mastered you can see a master icon here looks like I haven't been mastered one in a while here's a mastered uh, battle uh, which is a uh, pretty neat uh, and if I click on it, you can see it's mastered. I've already won it. Uh, I played it. I think this particular one was three times. Uh, and I won, I think it was like a bonus of three gems. So uh, taking a look at this, if you master this particular map, uh, looks like I have one more battle to go before I master this. Uh, I'll get a reward of three gems, 129 coins, and 112 uh, experience. And let's go ahead and select that battle with our team. See how well I do. Now this one is ranked medium. So uh, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you want to find uh, some statistics on the opponent you're about to battle, you can hit this question mark here. And that'll bring up an overview of the tier level of the character you're going to battle, as well as uh, the uh, um, the actual. Looks like a uh, focusing here is a bit off. Sorry about that, but he here you can actually see uh, the actual uh, name of the uh, character you're going to battle, the tier level that they're at, and also the level that they're at. So. It uh, gives you a little bit more insight as to what uh, you're fighting there. So uh, again, uh, just click on the screen to bring you back here. Uh, this uh, for mastering this particular battle, it's going to cost. It's going to reward me for uh, three gems and 129 coins and 112 experience. Now this is a medium rated battle, and we'll see how f how we fare uh, in this particular battle.
And uh, these dwarves actually are pretty quick. Uh, they're quick to strike, so they usually get the initiative pretty quick. And either Sebastian or my dragon are the fastest in that team. And there goes my dragon again. And you can see the damage uh, Sebastian dealt there. Uh, Ferelden Knight, uh, which I really like, uh, this particular character. And uh, the Grey Warden Mage did uh, a double damage. Of course, being in the back row, he has an increased chance there. And uh, there goes uh, Corypheus and uh, Sebastian again. And uh, you can see some of the uh, characters here have been stunned. Uh, that's an, uh, an ability some characters are able to deal. Uh, like my Ferelden Knight has an ability to deal uh, stun uh, with a high chance. So that's uh, one of the reasons why I like the Ferelden Knight. So, and it looks like I won that battle uh, with medium difficulty. And uh, you can see some of the statistics there. So a uh, pretty cool uh, battle. Uh, one that could have gone either way. And it looks like I earned 130 coins. Uh, prior to the the set reward so uh, pretty cool that I uh, was able to master uh, that particular map and there are the rewards there so uh, that's uh, pretty neat on there and uh, of course we can go on to the next quest in line uh, and th th there's also an option to continue like if uh, you have yet to uh, master it and you like say win this one uh, has a mastery of one of seven, and if I win that particular battle and and I haven't mastered it yet, the option on the reward screen screen will say ask you if you want to replay that battle to rematch in an attempt to master it. So that's kind of neat. Now uh, we're gonna be right back while I uh, uh, refill the uh, video uh, memory on here. And we're going to go ahead and go over some of the PvP aspects of the game. Okay, we're back and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the PvP aspects of this game. Uh, I say PvP loosely because you're not really battling uh, folks uh, interactively online. You're actually uh, battling uh, players' teams or, or squads. Uh, and uh, since there is no uh, direct interaction uh, during the battles, uh, so you're not really uh, battling a player directly. And uh, battles uh, are pretty much like quests uh, in that uh, uh, th you battle a an opposing squad, but it's a player instead of uh, a computer-generated squad. And uh, there is no map. Uh, there is a leader uh, or ladder ranking system and uh, instead of uh, just uh, coins and uh, experience uh, you are rewarded trophies and uh, trophies uh, uh, they are uh, a measure of where you are on the ladder and you, depending on whether you win or lose uh, you either gain or lose trophies and uh, let me see if we can go to the goal screen. And uh, prior to the update, uh, it gave you, a, I guess, a relative ranking of your trophies. So it doesn't look like it's... Oh, there you go. Uh, the trophy button, uh, which is pretty small compared to the rest of the uh, tabs there. But uh, it basically tells you uh, the current standings uh, from the number one ranked uh, person on the battle list. Uh, who currently has 1771 trophies and uh, of course it progressively scroll down uh, you can see all of the um, other folks on the ladder and um, me currently since I'm a very casual player I do not uh, pay uh, for uh, gems and uh, and I don't pay uh, to buy uh, uh, units uh, other than just using in-game currency. I'm ranked 181,011 and I currently have 568 trophies and uh, <laughs> pretty interesting and uh, looking at this ladder here you can see some of the folks on here you can keep scrolling uh, it'll I don't know how far down it, you can actually scroll maybe you can get down to 181,011 and see my name on here but um, 
you probably have to do a lot of scrolling to find it. But uh, at least it shows you the top ranking players on there. And what's kind of cool is you can actually battle that specific person on this list uh, by pressing uh, the button uh, that is next to their uh, name and rank. So if you wanted to try out, uh, use up one of your stamina uh, buttons to battle somebody, you can if you wanted to. Uh, if you're like me where I'm ranked 181,000, uh, I will most definitely uh, lose that battle <laughs> just uh, based on uh, where this person is in the, st in the standings. But if you want to give it a try and say if you win, that would be a really nice bragging right. So, But uh, that's kind of cool there. So. But uh, to initiate a battle, you hit the battle button, and uh, based on, uh, I think it is, uh, based on your number of trophies, and I guess your player level, and it, the computer will try to match you up with another player's uh, squad. And uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the uh, battle button here, while that loads. And you basically have uh, a timer. You have 30 seconds to decide whether you want to fight this particular person or if you want to move on to another person. And uh, you can see the screen here is very much like the screen battle. Uh, you have your, uh, your units, uh, their units. You have uh, the uh, runes that you're using and also runes they may be using. And uh, you can hit the question mark here. And uh, let me back out. The timer is about to run out because I got to mention that um, if the timer hits to zero and you don't do anything, uh, the computer will, the game will automatically start the battle. <laughs> and if you're undecided, you don't really want to battle that person. Uh, and uh, but it, the timer reaches to zero, you're forced to battle that person, <laughs> and you you may potentially lose. So. Uh, if you find out that you're running out of time and you don't like the person you're going to battle uh, just based on their makeup and it just looks too difficult for you to win, you can always hit the camp button and that'll take you to the main screen. And uh, you can uh, hit battle again and that'll enter the battle arena and uh, match you up against another person there. And uh, loading up, you can see this person has uh, inf a lot of information uh, here. He's got a lot of rares and epic in there. You hit the question mark. You can see uh, their relative levels. And if they look okay, you want to fight them, uh, you can. And you can also see the rewards and uh, like penalties uh, for winning or losing. If you win, you get 144 coins. If you win, you get 16 trophies. But if you lose, you're going to lose 17 trophies. So this one is pretty much matched up, and I forgot to hit any button. So it reached down to zero, so I'm forced to fight. And we'll see how we fare. And uh, looks like I, uh, my dragon, I got the uh, initial round. There goes Sebastian. There goes their bear. Yeah, it looks like a genlock there. Or genlock. And there goes my knight. See, he has a high chance to stun, so that's kind of neat. And uh, we have Grey Warden Mage take out three of those guys, so pretty cool. It looks like I'm going to end up winning this one here, so pretty cool. Ended up winning. And it looked uh, relatively uh, even. Uh, we Looks like we had about the same number of rares and epics. And the, the reward and penalty were pretty much matched together. So this was a pretty uh, decent fight. Uh, on there. It looks like he started out with a lot more health than I did, but I dealt more damage uh, to him. So, And uh, I got a couple of faction hits in there. I forgot there's also another bonus uh, for surviving. You get so many coins for winning a battle. And um, looks like my MVP was Corypheus. And uh, I only lost one unit, and that was the dragon. And uh, I gained uh, 60 bonus coins, so that's kind of neat. Hit the screen there get the rewards and uh, I was depleted a pip of energy there and uh, I moved up in the ladder, ladder ranks so that's kinda cool now uh, go ahead and hit the next duel now while you're evaluating the person uh, that you're about to battle if you're not happy uh, with uh, who you want to fight 
um, you can either back out uh, to the main screen like we did, especially when the timer is running down to zero, or you can hit this next button and that'll the computer will select another group, another uh, set of heroes. And if you're not happy with that, you can hit next. So it'll cycle through and uh, pick an opponent for you. Again, I think it's based off of trophies and player level, but I'm not sure uh, to match. I think it attempts to match you up with someone who's relatively in your range, but uh, I've had uh, people where they were level 80 or 100, and I'm only level 20, and uh, the, the, the particular opponent has like full roster of legendaries, so <laughs> I'm not sure what uh, randomness factor is applied into the selection process of the uh, person you're going to fight, so... To have uh, that ability to move on to the next player uh, is uh, beneficial. But again, you have that camp button if you want to back out all the way. Uh, this particular person uh, has one uh, epic and uh, three rares. So what level? This person's a player level 10 uh, in the teens for their uh, characters. All tier 1. I should be able to win this. Let me click on the screen again. You can see the rewards. If I win it, I get 14. If I lose, uh, I lose 18. So it's saying that I can probably win this because I'll, if I happen to lose, I'll lose more than uh, I'll win. So I think it's not going to grant it in my favor, oh, but we'll see. Again, it all really depends on uh, who can apply double damage, who attacks first, uh, and... Uh, how much damage is applied uh, so, uh, and who's doing the damage so there goes uh, my Ferelden Knight so, ooh, took out two guys in one hit and uh, Corypheus attacks all opponents uh, that's one of his abilities so that's kind of neat and uh, cool it looks like I won this one too so but uh, again nice to have that next button uh, if you're not confident in winning a particular battle on there so pretty cool and uh, pretty neat uh, let's go into the next duel here now uh, like again uh, I said uh, some folks may have issues with the non-interactive nature of the battle itself um, but uh, I don't have any uh, qualms about it uh, because I, I really like assembling and placing my heroes and collecting the heroes to see how they fare uh, not the actual battle itself and uh, let's move on to the next one just to see the different kinds of opponents I uh, able to face a lot of them look relatively matched so far uh, but we have here's a higher level dude here I'm running out of time let me just show uh, okay I got a pop up there let's go back into a battle just show the different levels of opponents I am able to face and uh, the quirkiness of the computer selecting my opponents uh, but so far it looks like it's matched me up with some uh, relatively decent folk and there's a higher level guy there's a guy with a legendary so, uh, another one there so you can see there's a variety that uh, has been uh, you can choose from and it looks like with the update they fixed maybe the matchmaking a little bit because prior to the update I was seeing like I said guys in level 100 uh, with all legendaries uh, with which no really no chance of me winning so why they would select me to fight them I don't know why but it looks like they may have fixed that now here's a all legendary group level 40 player so <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's still uh, a little glitchy on the uh, relatively matchmaking, but uh, looks like it's uh, improved a bit. So, so that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I want to talk about next are events and challenges. Uh, less about challenges, but more about events. Uh, events are uh, pretty interesting. Uh, they're like uh, PvP battles, uh, but instead of uh, winning or losing trophies you're uh, winning uh, what are called banners and uh, you uh, go through a pretty much a marathon session of opponents 
uh, to face and there are uh, tiered uh, reward systems uh, very similar to like how the maps are where you progress every uh, so often but uh, on an event uh, there are no events currently in place one just ended a couple uh, or yesterday uh, so there are no events I can that I can show you but it'll bring up a window it'll show you uh, where you are in the event and if you're just starting out you're you're at the bottom and what you have to do is battle so many opponents to gain so many banners and you do not lose banners for losing which is neat. Uh, you do win banners for winning, of course. And if you win a certain number of banners, it'll move you up the chain, basically, of rewards. Uh, like, say, if you're at the bottom of the list and the first reward is gold coins, and the requirement to get that is, say, uh, you need uh, 10 banners. And um, when you participate in the event and you select your opponent, you're, depending on the makeup of the team and stuff, uh, it'll reward you so many banners for winning that fight. And uh, like I say, if you accomplish uh, that particular uh, goal of 10 uh, banners to get the gold coins, it'll move you up the slot to the next, uh, 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 I guess, next goal. And it may be a uh, maybe more coins. It may be experience, bonus experience. It may even be a unit, uh, a card or a character, uh, which is really cool. That's another way to gain uh, characters is through events. And uh, this guy here, Corypheus, uh, let me just touch him. That guy here was uh, a character that I was able to acquire through an event. Uh, he was a reward, I think, at a total, uh, you had to get about 1,600 banners during the event to at least get the first uh, version of Corypheus. And so, you have a different reward system on an event, and it's really, really cool. And uh, prior to completing an event, I started out with only uh, 1,500 coins. After playing uh, essentially a week of the game, I was bu buying packs and stuff, uh, but I never really got to, uh, above 2,000 coins until I started the event. Uh, I started the event with 1,500 coins and about 150 some odd gems. And I participated in the event, um, it was over the course of three days, and I did hit uh, refreshes a couple times to refresh my stamina because I wanted to keep going even though I had run out I didn't want to wait so I hit uh, a refresh uh, for that I think it was like three or four times and uh, I ended up uh, using about 15 gems I think uh, over the course of the of the event uh, but by the time I uh, uh, finished uh, playing the event uh, I, over the three days, I ended up being in, I think it was like 15,000 place. Uh, not very, very high, but uh, nowhere near uh, the bottom. And I, if you see here, I was able to acquire almost 70,000 coins. Uh, so those coins I plan to use for buying some packs, uh, especially some soldier packs. So uh, I like the events very much. It, it rewards you very well for participating, uh, and you do not have to spend uh gems uh i don't like i said i only spent about 15 gems total and got 15 gems during the event so pretty much uh, leveled me out on gems so you really uh don't have to pay to win at least something and now of course i was not able to reach the top of the event uh those are really for those people who are really dedicated to this game uh but uh uh, even with the pay-to-win nature, I think this game is a lot of fun, uh, especially even if you're a casual player like myself and do not uh, plan to pay uh, more than uh, what you put in, uh, into downloading it, uh, which was basically free. And uh, like I said, I only spent one dollar out of this game so far and uh, to get uh, a legend or an epic uh, character, which was Sebastian here. And I don't think I'll plan to uh, spend any more. Now I know I probably will run into a wall of difficulty because I'm a casual player. Uh, chances of me getting more than 
five legendaries is really uh, difficult. Uh, and uh, I may run into a wall at some point, um, but I think as long as I'm participating in events and uh, they match me up against uh, folks that I can actually defeat, I think I will have a lot of fun at it. And I think it's well worth uh, playing on here, uh, even uh, with minimal investment uh, in the game. So, but a uh, very fun game, especially if you're into collecting and uh, and and. Uh, composing your makeup of heroes and to watch them battle it out and also uh, battling out other players uh, through uh, PvP. Uh, it's I think it's a really great game. Uh, I didn't even touch upon the graphics and I have uh, this game running on my Nook uh, on uh, Android and the graphics as you can see are really pretty good and uh, so I think it's really worth it uh, to play, uh, to download and play as uh, Especially if you're not uh, paying into anything into it. So, but uh, this is my casual peek into Heroes of Dragon Age uh, by Capital Games and Electronic Arts. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.